good morning students as a measure of preventing corona spreading we are not supposed to have classroom lectures so i'll be sharing recorded lectures which may help you to learn the remaining part of our course okay so welcome back to our course on programming in c so today we will be discussing about user defined functions in c first we will see how user defined functions are helping a programmer in managing the complexity in programming after that we will be discussing about a special kind of user defined function known as recursion see this program there are two functions main and max where max is a user defined function to find the maximum of two integers and what main is doing it first reads three numbers from the user and then it finds the maximum of these two numbers and assigns the result in the max and after that the function max is again used to find the maximum of the current max and c so the largest is obtained and stored in g largest and finally it prints the largest and that is this program let us see how this program will be executed so this blue arrow represents that during the execution of this program the function main is invoked for execution when a function f is invoked during execution its instance is created in memory and its variables are getting memory allocated for example here there are five variables in this function ta tp dc dmax and d largest and this memory layout shows an example memory allocation for these variables for example if you look at the variable db as memory is getting these two memory locations so we assume that all these are integer variables and an integer variables requires two bytes to store the value let us see how the main function is executed first the control comes to this print of statement so this message will be displayed on the screen when this particular statement is executed yeah so the next statement is a scanner statement it requires the user to input three different values sorry three three values assume that the user gives 10 30 and 20 as values then these values will be stored in the variables da gb and dz in that order and the values are stored in the corresponding memory locations so now the next statement is is an assignment statement so we know that when an assignment statement is processed first the rhs of the statement will be processed and in this case it's a function call so as i said earlier now a function instance needs to be created because this function is invoked yeah so a function instance of main is create so he max is created and this function is having three variables dx dy and dmax these variables are getting these memory locations and the values of this arguments that is da 10 and db 30 are passed to this form 
sorry these formal arguments in that order so dx is getting the value 10 and dy is getting the value which is uh, 30. So now see how the execution progresses in max the control first comes to the if statement and this condition is checked. Now the value of dx is 10 and dy is 30. So the this check fails and the control comes to the else part of the if else state. And the statement to be executed is an assignment statement and the RHS is just a variable and its value 30 will be assigned to dmax. Yeah, dmax is getting the value 30. And the next statement is a return statement. So what is the return statement? It's a control statement. When executed, the control will be transferred back to the calling function. So when the statement is executed, the control is transferred back to the calling part of uh, this main function and the value which is dmax is 30 is passed to this point. Also note that the instance created for max is deleted. So the variables in that instance are not existing now for this program. See previously the RHS of this statement was a function call and now during the execution that function call is processed and it is replaced by the value returned by the function instance which is 30 and the next operation to be performed is this assignment and so the value 30 will be assigned to dmax. Yeah, dmax is getting the value 30 and the next statement to be executed is an assignment and the RH is again a function called the same function. So similar scenario will be repeated. The instance of uh, max is again created. So not that this time dx and dy are getting uh, different uh, memory locations. That is each instance will be getting allocated in memory and can be in any part of the memory. Just uh, not that uh, uh, instances are different. Okay. So how the execution progresses in this case, the control comes to the if statement. Now the value of dx is 30 and dy is 20. So this check succeeds and the control comes to this assignment statement. So the value of dx which is 30 will be assigned to dmax yeah. and the control comes to the return statement again. So now this function instance will be deleted and uh, the value of dmax which is 30 will be returned to this point. Yes. So the next operation to be performed is this assignment. So 30 will be getting assigned in uh, d largest. And finally, the last statement of the main function, which is this printout, will be executed. So when we execute that, you know that this message will be printed, or this is talking. So that was the last statement. So the program finishes its execution and the instance of main function will also be deleted. Okay. So what are user defined functions? These are self contained units in a program with a standalone purpose. So we saw the function max. Its purpose was to find the maximum of two numbers. Similarly, you can write a, pro, a function to find the 
largest of n numbers or say to find the factorial of a number or to check whether a number is prime or not. So for different uh, standalone purposes, you can have a function in C with the required functionality. So when a function, say like max, is called or involved during execution, the program control gets transferred to the call function in this example max. The call function, example max, is executed until the control reaches a return statement or when it comes to the last statement of the call function. If you go back, uh, in case of function max is being called, the execution continues until it reaches the return statement or in the case of main when it is called, it continues until it reaches the last statement. That is what I mean. So it continues until the last statement or return is reached and then the control is passed back to the calling function. In the previous example, main is the calling function. Variables declared in a function f are getting memory allocated each time when f is invoked for execution. Actually an instance of f is created for execution and the memory becomes not accessible when the instance completes its execution. The details of how exactly an instance of a function is created and which are its parts are not the scope of not in the scope of our course. So let us look at another example where we are having a user defined function fact. So what this function is doing is it takes a, an integer argument and returns the factorial of n as the result. Assume that this function is correct. Then what this main is doing? It reads two integers to the variables dn and dr and when the value of dr is greater than or equal to dr, it should be dr, okay, read it as dr. It finds this, uh, this, the value of this expression, what is it? It is actually factorial of dn divided by factorial of dn minus dr. So, it is actually finding the pnr and then it prints the value of pnr and that is what this main function is trying to do. So from this example, we can see that user defined function allows a programmer to divide the program into a number of modules. So in this case, without this function, everything needs to be defined into single main function. In that case, maybe first you need a loop here to find the factorial of dn and after that you need another loop to find the factorial of uh, dn minus dr. Anyway, that is doable, but if you do that, the logic of the program will not be that clear when a third person tries to read the program. So, user defined functions make the logic clear and also you see this card will have to re re be repeated for finding first the factorial of dn and then to find the factorial of dn minus dr. So with this example it is clear that the user defined functions help a programmer to avoid redundant coding. So that is another advantage of a user defined function.
now see how a user defined function is specified which are the different parts in defining of user defined function so here in this example plot is a data type which represents the type of the value which will be returned by this function okay that is the first aspect the data type of the function which is the type of the value to be returned and the next thing is the name of the function in this case it is foo and uh, which is followed by a number of formal arguments and uh, how can you define uh, or specify a formal argument it uh, involves two parts first is the data type of the argument in this case data type of the second argument is int which is followed by a variable name representing the second formal argument okay so the first line defines the important aspects of this function which is the data type the name of the function and the list of formal arguments separated by comma and each formal argument is specified using the data type and a variable name representing the formal argument and then is a compound statement and what is it doing it defines the body of the function that is code to implement the required functionality okay uh, let us try to formalize the function definition so in general you can uh, see that a function definition is of this form the data type which is the uh, ty uh, data type of value to be returned followed by the function name which is the name of the function being defined and a function can have a finite uh, number of formal arguments and each formal argument is specified using uh, its data type and the name of the formal argument and the principal definition line is followed by a compound statement defining the uh, functionality to be provided by this function so here is how a function can be invoked so for example we can invoke the function foo by passing two arguments to it and in this case these two arguments are called actual arguments because the the values of these two arguments are passed into the formal argument in the function definition when an instance of this function is created so if you formalize the syntax of function invocation is a function name followed by the required number of arguments in parentheses separated by comma not that here the data type is not required and each argument can be an expression which is evaluated to a type which is compatible with the data type of the corresponding formal argument and a function invocation can be used in an expression where you need a value of type which is the data type of a function each invocation of the function causes the transfer of the value of the ith actual argument to the variable representing the ith formal argument in the instance of the function being created so now function declaration so this is the same program that we uh, discussed before which is to find the pnr but if you not the order in which these functions are defined changed previously if you look at uh, it was first 
the factorial function defined and then the main and the main function is calling the factorial and see in this case the main function is defined first and which is making call to the factorial function and in that case the system is not having any information about the details of the function being defined so it doesn't know what is the name of the function what is the data type of the function and how many arguments are there so to help the system understand the structure of the function c demands you to provide a function declaration like this to help the system know that there is a function namely factorial which is taking an integer argument and returning an integer okay so you need function declaration when you invoke a function is here requires one a function g is called from a function f and the function g is defined after the definition of f in the program text for example here the function fact is defined after the definition of main function and main function is making a call to factorial and therefore this declaration must be provided and in function declaration the name of the formal argument is optional okay you can just say in that's enough let us recollect the advantages of uh, user defined functions so other than the points that we discussed like uh, it helps in avoiding redundant programming it helps a programmer to divide a flash program into a number of functions and it makes the logic clear so other than that is a defined functions enable a programmer to create her his own library a programmer in c sorry a program in c can be viewed as a set of communicating functions so that is a general view about the c program in the previous examples you can see that uh, we had uh, two functions in each case and basically if you look at the execution of that program you can see that uh, is basically uh, set of two communicating functions and the communication among the functions are implemented using function invocations and returns so when the main function invokes the max function the max function starts its execution and when it comes to its end by executing a return statement or after executing the last statement the control is returning back to the main function and the execution continue from the previous point so a c program in general is a set of communication functions and the execution of any c program starts with the execution of main function so there must be a user defined function a single function namely main so that's the requirement so on invoking a user defined function g from a function f okay now you are invoking a function g from f so what happens is the moment you invoke the function g from f the execution of f is temporarily interrupted and the program control gets transport to the function g and it returns to f only when g finishes its execution that is when the return statement of g is reached or the last statement of c is reached sorry g is reached once the control gets back to f the execution of f is resumed from the point where g was invoked
So here there is a number of uh, exercise questions. So I'll be sending you a PDF. Uh, okay, I have already sent you a homework exercise while you are in this vacation. So it's the same set of functions. Okay, so all these functions are processing a number. So there should be a function to read the number. Its purpose is to just read a number. Okay, and the remaining function should be performed on the number which is presently given by the user. If the user wants to change the number, then he may use the read function again. Okay, that's it. So maybe you can uh, provide a uh, menu driven program for this. Maybe that the option one is for reading the number. So if the user provides the option one, she or he should be allowed to read the number. And suppose uh, this is option number five. If uh, she gives the option five, then, then uh, this is, uh, the program should display the factorial of the number. Okay. So I hope uh, I received uh, the solution for almost all these functions from many of you. And looking forward to see the solutions from other students. So let's proceed to the next topic which is recursion. So before discussing recursion, we need to understand how function instances are really created in memory. So consider this example, here we have uh, two functions, it's the same example, I am not showing the details of me in this. And here the purpose is to understand some more details about the function instance because that is very important to understand how recursion works. Suppose the main is involved. So this blue arrow shows that the main function is called for execution and assume that uh, the control reaches the statement. Okay, so now when the main function is involved, the instance of main is created and uh, assume that there are these variables d largest uh, db and da and uh, we assume that uh, db and da are having these values okay so actually where the instance is created in c the instance of memory so the instance of the function is created in memory in a data structure called stack. Okay, so for making the discussion simple, I have uh, given the labels to uh, the different variables. Okay, you know that db is uh, allocated in this part of the memory and da is allocated in this part of the memory and d large is here. And how the program access this memory location is through this stack. When the program refers to db, what it do is it goes to the stack and see what is the location for db and it finds that 20 and that 20 is represented here. When I say 20 here, I mean the memory address for db now holds the value 20. So please uh, read it as like what I said. When I say 20, when I show 20 here, I mean the memory address where db is mapped is storing the value 20, that's it. Okay. So what is this uh, statement? When this statement is executed, we know that the RHS is a function call and an instance of max needs to be created. And you see that about this, a new record is created on the stack 
which is actually the memory for all the variables in the function which is being called. So this is the instance for max function and this is the instance for main function. Okay. So you can see that uh, when max is called, an instance of max is created in this part of the memory. Okay. And that is the uh, memory for max function and uh, it comes to this point and now dx, what is dx? dx is 20, dy is 10. So this condition is evaluated to true. So the control comes here. And the value of dx which is 20 is signed to t max. Okay, and now the return statement which which is now very important. What this return statement will do is it will delete this instance and also it will delay. When I say delete this instance, the instance of the max function will be deleted from the stack. And that's what's happening. Okay, the control comes back to max. And so now max is 20 and uh, that is signed uh, uh, and uh, when we execute this statement that 20 should be assigned to d log this. Okay, now onwards we may not be uh, using the memory layout rather we will be only using the stack instance to see how a function is executed. Okay, so once again, when I say that on the stack da is 10, I mean using the stack, I will be going to the memory address 511 and the value 10 will be read. Okay, for simplicity, I will be representing it as 10 over here. Okay, so we may not draw the memory layout from now onwards. I think uh, it's clear. So this part of memory is uh, represented as a stack instance like this. Okay. So we uh, we just finished uh, discussing an example where we saw how function instances are created on stack during execution of a program. Now we need to know or we need to know a little more about how the program control is transferred between two functions when fun uh, functions are executed during the execution. So consider this example. So suppose the foo function is executed and uh, the control comes to this function call and here is this function it goes there and see how it progresses, it comes to a point and then it executes a loop and it, uh, okay, it executes that loop again and then it uh, comes to the last part of the program and it returns, okay. So that function instance is finished and now the control progresses like this. And again a function called to the same function so it goes to that function and since is created okay it executes through that part and this time okay it is not uh, executing the loop body because the, maybe the condition is wrong the condition is not evaluated to true it comes to the end and it returns okay that's how this uh, program is executed is when a function is called, the control jumps to that function, it uh, continues in that function until it reaches the last statement of the return statement and then it returns back to the calling function and it continues like that. And now see an example of a, a recursive function before we formally define recursion. See in this case who comes to this point which is a function call 
it is interesting see the foo function from inside is making a call to itself okay it's kind of a loop and this is what is called recursion a process where a function calling itself is called recursion and in this case and suppose this happens forever then the execution enters an infinite loop so there must be a way to come out of this there must be a condition checking before and if a condition is true then you execute foo otherwise you come out assume that there is such another path which allows you to come out of this loop when i say loop i mean a function calling itself it's a kind of loop if you look at the pictorial representation it's just like a loop that is what i mean when i say loop okay so here's an example where a function foo calls itself and that process is what is called recursion let us try to understand more about recursion so we will be using the function instance which is created on the stack to understand how exactly a recursive function is executed and what is this function is namely r fact that is a recursive function fact to find the factorial of a number and it is expected to find the factorial of the given number let us try to execute this program for a given input so by this blue arrow i mean the recursive function r factorial is invoked for execution by passing the value of the argument as 3 so as we know when a function is invoked regardless of whether that function is uh, is a recursive function or not its instance is created in memory which are the variables in this function the variable n and temp so n and temp are getting memory allocated and the value of n is now 3 and temp is just declared we don't know what value is there and in this case this represents the return point because the, when we want to uh, execute a recursive function the return point is very important and it will be clear when we come to uh an invocation statement okay let us try to see how the execution progresses and now the control comes to this point and what is the value of n now n has got the value 3 so this condition is uh, false so the control comes to this point which is an assignment statement where the rhs is a function call and like the previous example here is a recursive call because making a call to the same function okay but uh, what happens is a uh, is not different a new instance of r fact must be created in stack the new instance so that instance is also having a uh, uh, two variables that is the n now the value passed to it is 2 and the temp is created we don't know what is the value okay and see now when a function is invoked the return address is also getting stored in the stack and what is the return address when i say return address i mean the part of the program or function from which the function is called because when the call function finishes its execution the control must be transferred back to a point from where the function is called for that the return point is stored in the stack in this case i uh, this is the return point i have given a name to understand it uh, as uh, ra1 so the return point ra1 is stored here okay no need to understand what exactly is getting stored there just assume that this symbol is something like this symbol is uh, name is there to represent the state okay now see there are two instances of the r fact in the stack okay this is one instance 
and this is another instance and always uh, the instance on the top of the stack will be executing and now see how the second instance progresses in execution it comes to this point and what is the value of n now you have to see what is the value of n in the topmost instance which is 2 so 2 is not less than or equal to 1 so the check fail and the control comes again to this function call so what will be happening another instance of uh, main that is the third instance will be created here and uh, before creating that instance and jumping into that instance uh, the return point will be marked here as ra1 so that's it the third instance that is this one is created in memory you know that that instance is created before the first and second instances completed their executions okay and now one is the value reaching here how the execution progresses now it comes to this point and what is n n in the current instance is 1 so 1 is less than or equal to 1 so the condition evaluates to true okay so the control comes to the return statement so what will happen when this return statement is executed the instance will be killed that is this instance will be killed and removed from the stack and the control comes back to the topmost instance which is this and to which statement of uh, this instance as indicated by this ra1 okay that's it so that instance is deleted and the control comes to this point how the system knows that the control should come to this point which is as indicated by this return address okay so now the control is here this assignment has to be performed and uh, if you uh, remember what was this uh, temp is equal to our fact okay so this is uh, So what is it and uh, this is temp is equal to r fact of n minus 1 and what is n minus uh, 1 now n is uh, 2 sorry if you go back uh, let me see what happened at uh, return 1 okay okay fine so the control comes to this point and uh, now what is r fact r fact is this return value this return value is uh, uh, 1 this 1 is coming to this point and uh, so next the statement to be executed is in this instance this statement so the value which we are getting here now it is 1 will have to assign to will have to be assigned temp so the temp is getting the value 1 and the control comes to this statement so this is again a return statement but in this case it's not a simple value or a variable which is an expression so that expression needs to be evaluated first and what is it n into temp and what is the n n is uh, 2 and temp is 1 so the value of uh, 2 into 1 which is 2 will be returned return to which point return to the point ra1 in this instance so when you execute this return statement the current instance of r fact will be removed and the next instance will be resumed okay so resume from this point and uh, so the control now comes to the return statement So this return statement now causes the value n into temp, what is it, n into temp is 6 to be returned to which point now you have to return the last instance in the stack for r factors going to be deleted. So the control will be going to the function, maybe the main function from this r fact was invoked with the value 
3. So, the 3 factorial which is 6 will be returned to the called function, sorry the calling function. Okay, we just finished uh, discussing an example recursive function and now try to recollect what is recursion. Recursion is a process by which a function calls itself and it is used when a problem needs to do some computation, sorry, uh, do the same computation on different instances of the problem. For example, in case of a factorial computation, uh, it needs to solve it like if you want to find 3 factorial, you can say that it is 3 into 2 factorial and 2 factorial is nothing but 2 into 1 factorial. So, this factorial computation needs to be performed many number of times. And in such situation, uh, recursion is a nice option. But you have to be careful, when you use recursion, there must be a way for the program to terminate. In case of uh, factorial, every time you know that you are saying n into fact of n minus 1. Okay, you are calling the factorial with a value which is strictly less than the previous value. So, eventually you will get to 1 or 0 and when you get to 1, the function will be, uh, the program uh, will be allowed to come out of the recursion loop. So, we saw that when uh, recursion, a function is recursively executed multiple instances of the same function may be created on the stack. And uh, there are various uh, classical problems for which recursion is used. When recursion is used, programming becomes easy and maybe uh, it becomes more clear. But the cost in terms of memory and execution speed will be more when compared to a non-recursive version of the same program. It is true that any recursive program can be converted into a program without recursion. You can replace recursion with a with an iterative statement in a program without recursion. Okay. Here there are two exercises for you. Write a recursive function to find the number of digits in an unsigned integer. Okay, try to see how you can formulate this as a recursive problem. Okay, think about it. So, formulate a recurrence relation representing the problem and write the recursive function and see how it is it executed and also try to see the ins, uh, instances which are created and deleted during the execution. Okay, another example is write a recursive function to find the greatest common divisor of two integers. Okay, so here is another example and the function namely rfib is used to find the nth Fibonacci number. Hope all of you know the Fibonacci sequence and uh, this function is to find the nth number in the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, I am not going to explain how this function is executed. I am giving it as an exercise. So, I have marked the return point here. And the exercise is uh, you trace the execution of this invocation. Okay. This function needs to be invoked, which is fine. And uh, 
number of different instances will be created on this stack. It's, an, uh, it's a very interesting example. And uh, please try to see how this program or, uh, or this function is executed and trace the execution and draw the stack instances at uh, different points. Okay. So, and thank you and this is uh, all for today and I am looking forward to see your solution for all the exercise problems given today. Okay, see you in the next class. Bye.